Right, this video is a kind of a, a two-question video here. Um, I was watching one of that Nikon guy's videos, uh, Matt Granger, and he was doing the review of the Nikon doesn't film, Nikon DF, uh, which is the camera which is around about two and a half grand. Uh, it's all retro and, and cool, sexy looking, um, but very expensive, doesn't do video. It has the same sensor as the Nikon D4, awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of Kind of like, oh, that's amazing. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, why doesn't it do all these cool things? Why is it not that great? Um, but uh, it seems, seems that it, like it looks like it's it's pretty good. And uh, certainly at the wedding which I was at just the other week, I was thinking if the wedding photographer there was rocking a Nikon DF, I'd be like, respect. That's awesome. But it doesn't like the ergonomics of those little dials doesn't actually make it uh, a better functioning camera. Like it actually, I think those dials and stuff are nice to have, but see if you're doing weddings, they're not uh, benefic beneficial to the functioning of uh, using it as a, as a camera, um, or using it as a workhorse, that's the main thing I would say. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, in Matt's uh, video, he was saying that the Nikon DF, which is a pretty darn expensive camera, um, doesn't fall under the NPS standards. NPS, Nikon Professional Services? I don't know. Never used it. Never really heard of this. I've seen it around, seen it on things, but I've never bothered looking it up. So the NPS is the Nikon Professional System Services or something like that. And uh, if you are a full-time photographer, where your all your income is from photography, um, and you ha and it's primarily through Nikon cameras, but no, it's only got to be Nikon cameras, then you can get this special service from Nikon. Um, so in other words, if something breaks down or if, I don't know, there's lots of things. I'll put the link down to it below so you can read all the things, the benefits that you get from it. Um, and uh, for to be into the NPS, it's not just pay a donation or anything like that, it's that like you've got to have I think it was six items from what they consider to be their professional stuff. So two of them has got to be cameras. So either the Nikon D4, D800, uh, D700, um, and a couple of other ones. Can't remember what they all were. Um, but you've got to have at least two of those cameras, and then the other four has to be out of their professional lenses. So in other words, it's like their the list. I'll put it down below as well. So have a look at that. But I was like, wow, that's that's going to be an expensive kind of thing. And uh, but at the same time, if you are a pro. Um, and you are making enough money to cover all that and you need all those lenses But it'd be a bit of a bugger if you're like a pro and you only do wide-angle landscapes it's like right I've got the two cameras and I've got all the wide-angle lenses, but I just don't have one more which would be the The ultra telephoto or something like that. It's like oh, damn not in it. Anyway, don't, don't really know where that's going But the question is Has any of you Part of the NPS and have you benefited from it? Have you ever used it? Um, I'd be very surprised if anybody says yes. And if you do, I'm going to expect that you're trolling and I'm going to check your page as well. Um, but if you are, if you do, have you found any benefits from it? And uh, did it, did knowing that the NPS was there, did that promote you to, or motivate you to buy your next lens being another Nikon professional one rather than a, an alternative brand uh, professional one? So let me know about that. So I wonder if, if that was actually uh, a, a motivator and B, if, uh, if you've actually benefited from it in any way whatsoever. And then the second question is, why is the Nikon DF not in their professional range, in the professional lineup? Is it, so, so it, uh, is that Nikon effectively admitting, yeah, it's a camera for showing off. It's not a camera for professionals. Um, yeah, it's an odd one. I don't, I don't really know where where the Nikon DF comes in because I, what I what I think I would be most most tempted with is the Nikon DF2, the the next one that's going to come out, or the Nikon DF S. Um, so in other words, the sensor in it, awesome. The look of it, oh, I think is very sexy. The back, a bit rubbish. I've done a video where I've said how they could definitely benefit the by kind of like clearing out the back of the camera because there's just far too many. Like, I think I counted 32 buttons uh, in total on that camera. Like, lots, of, lots of buttons, but the dials, mm, very nice. So, and no video, I'd love it to have some video as well, as well. So I reckon that the DF2 or the DFS uh, will be a definitely something which I would be very tempted with. Um, uh, 
but only tempted because I've got cameras which cover my main needs. So I've got the fast frames a second on the D700. I've got uh, the great video, uh, great video in the Nikon D, no, the Canon 5D Mark II. Um, and I've got great video on the GoPro as well. So I don't really need all that stuff, but it'd be nice to have it in the Nikon DFS or DF2. Um, but uh, I think the just the awesomeness of the sensor that's in there, the sexy look of it and the size of it, I think it would be definitely a nice thing to... Like, I, I fully agree with their advertising. It's a nice thing to carry around. But to use as a workhorse, I doubt that would really happen. Unless I bought that and they're full on 14 to 16, uh, 14 to 24 millimeter wide angle lens. Uh, and then I did like my property stuff with that. That, oh, that, oh, that would be, that'd be interesting. Maybe that's the future. Um, but yeah, let me know. Why do you think it's not part of the professional range? And uh, does the Nikon professional system services, whatever, has that benefited you? Cheers, bye-bye.